Okay, so uh, we talked a little bit in the last video about the math, about how all this works, how you can go from a 960 pixel uh, grid to a fluid grid, but using that relationship of 960 pixels as the context to the target size of whatever you're wanting to use. So you divide the target by the context and you get the uh, result of the percentages that you're going to want to use when you are um, creating the fluid grid. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create, uh, in Visio we're going to do a quick mock-up of a website and then we are going to uh, convert that into a um, a web page that uh, mocks, uh, reproduces the mock-up that we're going to do. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to go into D2L and go into the week four lab and uh, you can d download the Visio template for the 960 grid and open that and that's going to bring up this document. Now just to keep things uh, plain and simple you'll see that when this loads in it's got two pages loaded in one for a 16 column grid one for a 12 column grid. We're going to be using the 12 column grid so I am going to delete uh, that page and I'm going to delete the 16 column grid just because uh, that way it doesn't get confusing doesn't get in my way and you can use the stencils in this way anytime you want to do mock-up uh, so I'm just gonna do a real basic mop mock-up here and so in order to I need to have some shapes and I'm just gonna use general shapes because all I'm really gonna be doing is uh, drawing rectangles on the page and so I uh, pull out my first rectangle and I align it with the grid. Notice how it snaps to that grid. That's one of the nice things about this template. And so um, this is going to be my header. I'll make it a little bit bigger there. And uh, I guess just to, to keep things clear, I could uh, colorize that so that I can see what is the background. So I've come to the Home tab and I'm choosing Fill and I'm just going to, uh, I'll use a series of blues uh, for this mock-up, just getting progressively darker so that you can see what it is. So in there I'm going to have my header, um, and I could just go ahead and type header, and what you're going to see is that it is going to uh, go right to the middle of that. Now, um, as you're designing this, you have the ability to then click on the uh, text block and what this does is it allows you to show what portion of that where the the text is going to sit so I'm just going to reduce that see how that works we've got the block and then by using that um, text block tool it allows me to decide where the text is going to sit in there so um, that's just a tip for Visio and uh, it took me a while to figure that out by the way uh, so I'm going to have my header in there, and all we're going to do is, is structure. We're not going to have content um, for this assignment because we just want to see how we make it fluid and, and how we can introduce media queries to change things up. So I've created my header. Inside of my header, I'm going to add another rectangle, and this rectangle I'm going to call nav. And I noticed I use a capital H in header there. That uh, violates my own rules. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up right now as soon as I realize it. So I've got my header. And inside my header, notice that it sits completely inside of it. I've got my nav. And this corresponds to the... Um, illustration I was showing with the math earlier. Now what I want to do, uh, just as I set the header to cover 12 columns, to keep things relatively simple for our first task, I'm going to set this one to 10 columns. And if you'll recall, that becomes uh, the equivalent of 780 pixels. So when I start uh, coding for that nav, it's going to be 780 pixels uh, divided by uh, 940 pixels and it's 940 because there's 10 pixel gutters on each side of a, a, a 960 um, uh, full grid. Now in the demonstration I used a wrapper so I'm gonna go ahead and put that wrapper in. You don't always have to use a wrapper 
but it, it doesn't hurt to it, it's it's good practice and um, I've gone too big there I'm still getting familiar with uh, the Visio interface so bear with me a little bit as I, I struggle my way through now there's a couple things that I need to do uh, first off is I want to send that to the back because it's in the way I want to send that to the back but now that it's in there and let me resize it the full way you can't see my columns so what I want to do is I want to uh, change the um, the transparency on uh, that particular shape now it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to do this so I'm going to share the tip with you I've selected the element that I want to affect and I'm right clicking it and what I want to do is I want to choose format shape and after I've chosen format shape you'll notice that it shifts over here and I want to go to fill because I want to change the color of the fill and I want to give it some transparency and you'll notice that as I slide that my grid becomes visible through that so that that's just a a little tip about how you can make it so that your grid is more visible now if I want to extend that and be able to see uh, through these others so that I can snap to my grid I will do the same thing and just make them a little bit more visible so that I can see through those so now you can see I've got this light blue header I've got this white nav and I've got this wrapper that is uh, around the entire thing um, and so uh, I would have given that a, a div an idea of wrapper so that would have been a, a div uh, so I'm gonna move these just slightly out of my way so that I've got room to write and I've selected that wrapper again and ID equals wrapper and so I've got my ID of wrapper there and just to be consistent I'm gonna move that text out of the center and I do that using this tool and when you can see that little line there that means you've got the freedom to determine where the text is going to be placed in your page so I place that in there okay so I come back and now I've got the the basic grid now what I want to do is I want to come down and I want to make this a uh, three column layout within a main body section so I'm going to create my main body here and then down below it will be a footer oops I still had my text um, selected so I'm going to um, I'm going to change to my pointer tool actually I'm going to resize that back over here where I want it to be and I'm going to choose my pointer tool and I'm going to change the size of the actual box and I want that to cover all 12 um, because what I'm actually doing right now is doing a mock-up for the full size uh, 12 column layout now as you recall in responsive grid we will also have um, two other sizes for instance an eight and a four column grid and we'll get into that by the way what we are doing here is the same type of process that you're going to have to go through in assignment one when you are creating your uh, wireframes for your website so um, I'm gonna call this one again main body and that would be an ID of main body and I regain control of it and I uh, change my location of that text just so that it's over there and out of the way again I do that with that tool
Okay, so I've got the, the main body that's going to serve as the, uh, the containing element so that I can do a three grid or a three column layout. So I'm going to drag my rectangle over here and I'm going to give this a four column width. And I'm just going to duplicate that. And you notice that when I'm doing this, let me uh, make this transparent so you can see what I'm doing. I'm making my main body more transparent here. Let me give that a little bit of color just so that a consistent So I've got the main body there, and what I'm doing is I'm resizing these so that they cover uh, four columns and they don't cover the, um, the gutter in between. So I want to match those up there because we have to keep those gutters open when we're using this type of uh, function. Um, otherwise, the math fa falls apart. and I've got my third one. So now you'll notice that in this case I've sacrificed the gutter on the outside of these because there's already a gutter there. So this is actually going to butt right up to that um, main body section here, uh, the, the edge of that. So we just need to keep that in mind. We need to uh, be cognizant of the way that this grid works and work within its limitations. Some people would say that is the, the challenge of this is that it, it imposes limitations that you may want to break out of but when you are working with a team of designers and you're wanting to go against um, different uh, different sizes of presentation by sticking to those mathematical systems, whatever system you choose to do, uh, then that is going to uh, give you the, the greatest flexibility to, to make all this stuff work together. Got the wrong one grabbed. Okay, so we've got our basic diagram here. We could call these left, center, and right, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, basic layout we have on the outer level we have wrapper inside that we've got header and inside header we have nav uh, outside of both header and nav but inside of wrapper we've got main body and inside of main body we've got left center and right And then outside of main body, we then again have footer. So this is sort of the basic design that we are going to be working with um, as we go forward. Now what I would like you to do for the first step in this lab, I would like you to go ahead and build a mock-up similar to this. And that, then what I would like you to do is I would like you to go through and determine what the percentage widths are going to be for all of these sections in order for this layout to work. 